knew the Dragon Blade was coming up, and that's a smart swap for time going. He's going to get an opportunity. Oh, the halt! Whoa! The immortality field. So much damage coming through, but Prophet cutting through. It gets four! Now the three and a half get rid of the five for Shanghai. Halt's coming in, but Envy gets pulled in first, and Hurag has got the shot to help him down, and Hurag! Oh my goodness! Gets the triple, goes forward up towards Koma, and he takes him down as well! All right, folks, this is Inside Esports, and the final stage of the Overwatch League second season is officially underway. Stage four has brought on a lot of changes that we'll have to ask our good buddy Ron Lee about. But before we get him on the line, let's take a look at some highlights. The Kellex actually on the Brigitte here. Uh, the position for the charge is annoying. They're just going to drop down and make it half a color hex to get any advantage. Kellex is just a spear on the wall at this stage, and Nero brings a fist down. That is filthy! And the one time Gods isn't on Diva, could cost them big when that's ready. Arctic's around the back, trying to survive. Give it to the hell oh, <laughs> but he's on! No he way! Pulled. Gotta be careful, yeah, you're right. Jake is close to the EMP. Could be big. There's a stick coming in. Puts Gray between a bomb and an icy wall place. And Houston Outlaws, two kills already, as they work towards turning this one around. They want to retake it. It looks like they're going to get it. What a play at the end by the Outlaws. On a narrow corridor, so have to be worried about Sonic Arrow. Shows where everybody is. He's just going to throw the Dragon Strike in there. Get him by the tail. Oh, Great my. hold. Oh, the hold. Setting up profit for the 4K. Yeah, they knew the Dragon Blade was coming out, but that's a smart swap for time. He's going to get an opportunity. Oh, the halt! Whoa, that's Immortality field. So much damage coming through, but profit cutting through. It gets four. Definitely suits Arissa. She covers most of that gap with her shield. They can walk up and early pick up BQB. Sire player! Sawyer! Knight. That's the edge. Not for yet again. Uh, and that's why the Titans had to be very careful now. Stand. Like, Axel's trying to break line of sight as much as he can. Time for the Nana Blade. Oh. Could be a hole as well. This could be nasty, but he can see with the body. Grenade right at the beginning. Still able to find Byron. And he goes up the stairs. <laughs> gets himself three. Now the three and a half compared to the five for Shanghai. Alt's coming in, but Envy gets pulled in first, and Hurang has got the shot to help him get down, and Hurang! Oh my goodness! Gets the triple, goes forward up towards Koma, and he takes him down as well! Looks like it's going to be a hold from oh, the Vancouver Titans. Here. That'll get the job done one way or another. The Vancouver Titans, it's a 4-0, and they have had many of those. Even with all the changes, the more things just stay the same. The Vancouver Titans start stage four with a series of dominant wins and help break down all the craziness from week one. My brother from another mother, Ron Lee, joins us now. How's it going, Ron? Hi. You know, I'm a single child, so it's nice to have a brother in the, through the webcam here and say hello, even though I'm not in the studio. Ah, well, I miss you, buddy. Uh, between the two of us, you were always more in favor of 222 roll lock. I was a bit more skeptical, and we've both now seen the results. I gotta say, I'm loving it on the pro level, but while playing, I haven't been locked into a team with two crappy DPS players. I can't bump to heals yet, so we'll see how it works in the lower ranks. But what are your thoughts on its effect on OWL and contenders so far? Um, in contenders, it hasn't been implemented just yet, although it will be implemented in their playoff. Okay. Um, but in Overwatch League, I've been having the time of my life. I think I've never enjoyed watching Overwatch more in its three years of, of runtime. Um, I think all the teams now are having a lot more fun themselves playing, and you can tell that when the players are enjoying themselves and get to express their, their creativity, their mm. style, that everything just comes to life a little bit more. And, and I know the audience is really enjoying it. Me, I, I'm super enjoying teaching it. So it's been a blast all around. It doesn't make any sense though. More creativity from a more restrictive circumstance, but <laughs> whatever. Um, so which teams have settled into this 222 thing the best? Um, I mean, we've seen Dive, we've seen Tracer return, a whole lot of my, my waifu may, or well, waifu, <laughs> am I saying that even right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Mei. I think she can be very irritating to play against, but I'm glad that we can see play from every single hero in the game now. I think 30 out of 30 heroes have been played at all to a decent degree. It's not like um, it's very... In the tank role, it's a little bit uh, squished right now. You're seeing a lot of Hog and Orisa, yeah. but even then you're seeing D.Va and a Wrecking Ball and occasionally Winston still in the dive, like you said. So mm. hopefully with Sigma's introduction, they'll open a couple of more play styles that could kind of level the playing field. Right. But I think, um, you know, the Chinese teams like Chengdu, for example, are doing well to kind of find their place in the meta now. Mm. They've always been that wacky team to innovate, and in 2-2-2, two, 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 maybe they'd be forced to kind of play to everyone else's level. But no, they have their more surprises. They have 
uh, things like Doomfist Widowmaker to counteract these May and Reaper comps, and uh, they always have something up their sleeve, which is why I think they're still succeeding. And Guangzhou, you know, being uh, one of the poorer teams the last few stages have finally risen up, and I think that's partially because I always thought their players were super mechanically gifted, and now that they're not hamstrung by having to play these really tank-heavy, really heavy teamwork-oriented GOATS comps, that they right. can shine a bit more on their own, uh, you know, the heroes that they're famous for, like Happy on Widow or Shu Anana. Right. Well, on that note, are there any other teams? I mean, we've only had one week. Some of the teams haven't even had two games yet. Are there any other teams that are in that same um, play style that you suspect will really benefit from this new 2-2-2 two, two, two lock? Mm, I think given a little bit more time, I can see teams with really strong Widowmaker players start to become uh, more prevalent and, and kind of rise in the ranks. I think Philadelphia Fusion uh, with Carpe, even though he's an amazing Widow player, they've had him playing Reaper the, the last week, which mm. kind of blew my mind. I think he's one of the best Widows in the world, and Those are to not see him two play that is Two different characters. Weird. It's so weird yeah. that he would Very do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess they're trying to push the whole kind of mini goats thing with the May and Reaper that you, you know, get the two highest HP DPS heroes that you can and maybe kind of get that same style to work. Mm. But it's it's not it's not happening for them. And I'd like to see them kind of go back to the drawing board and say, oh, let's play double sniper. We have the pool for that. Let's get Carpe and Widow so we can make those four man kills, five man kill highlights that we've seen uh, last year. Right. Uh, outside of them. I think Vancouver Titans will do spectacularly. I mean, they've already been doing super well, and yeah. we've seen Haxall on his Genji really make a massacre of the entire league. And uh, a lot of people were like, you know, Runaway or Vancouver Titans, I should say, um, you know, won't be good anymore because it's not goats. They're super, super awesome at goats. But anyone that knows their track record would say they were a 2 2 monster in Korea. They're not going to lose now. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, let's take a, a moment away from uh, Overwatch League to just talk about you know, where, where I play at like high gold, low plat, how is 2-2-2 lock going to affect the game for people who are just playing for fun on the competitive ladder? I think everyone's going to be having a better time in general. I've been spending a lot of time playing 2-2-2 on PTR. Right. I haven't touched live in a while, actually, just because I've been having so much fun. Mm. I, think, I think the lock really helps curb toxicity in yeah. a big way. Um, a, a large part of Overwatch that was really infuriating sometimes was that even though it's a team-based game, you're often actually fighting your own team more than the enemy. You're you're arguing about what compositions to pick in the first 40 seconds. You're yeah. trying to get people comfortable. You're trying to accommodate for others that might not be as accommodating or as flexible as you are, or even unwilling to switch. Yeah. Um, so I think overall, having that better expectation that you can go into a game and play what you want will put better, uh, you know, put the players in. in Kind of a situation where they're always one foot forward already and kind of in good spirits mm. and that way you could not worry so much about like oh do i even get to play my hero now rather you get to just go straight into okay what's our strat let's 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 execute let's have a good time yeah um and that's been really good and i think half of winning is just having the right mentality and mm. that is a big part of why i think players in the average level uh might fail they might not have the same mental resilience as a lot of players in the upper echelons but now uh hopefully we can see you know, you get a little less frustrated on Lucio and start climbing. And, <laughs> hey, and, and no, I, I don't thing. get frustrated on Lucio. I get frustrated when I'm forced to play Ryan and people are giving me a hard time saying I play it like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, look at my hours played. I'm a healer main. Anyway. Well, you don't have that problem. You're good. <laughs> um, let's talk about this new tank, uh, Sigma, uh, joining uh, the league, as you said, uh, before playoffs and uh, World Cup. Uh, how do you expect that he will shake up the, the meta? Obviously, in 2 2 2, it's, it's going to be different than shaking up the GOATS meta we were so accustomed to. But where is he going to fit in? How are people going to play around this new hero? So Sigma, obviously not having been out yet, I can't say for certain. But what I can say is that he seems like he'd synergize well with certain heroes more than others. Mm. Um, you know, being a main tank um, like Blizzard wants him to be means that he's designed to take a lot of punishment and he's designed to kind of hold an area really well. Mm. But I don't see that happening. I don't see you really playing him as a kind of staunch defender as that shield is a little on the weaker end and he doesn't really have um, kind of the the oomph that you might expect from a little on the weaker end i mean in the introductory video <laughs> kaplan's like it's at 400 hp right now we may have to roll that back that seems like it's a huge shield yeah i mean 400 hp is fine but he has no armor for one 
And okay. also, like, he's kind of, he's the tallest uh, hitbox in the entire game because he floats and he's already kind of this absolute unit of a monster. Right, uh, right. Having tested him a bit myself, I think he's actually rather weak to uh, coordinated Roadhog Arissa, which is the meta right now. Mm. Um, I see him actually being better at breaking certain bunkers uh, with his ultimate, but to get there and build that ult actually takes a long time. It takes almost as long as Graviton. Well, didn't they so... just uh, up the overall uh, ultimate generation by 12%? Yeah, across all heroes, and right. he has his definitely feels quite locked to begin with. Mm. So he'll probably have a place, I think, at breaking certain bunkers, but it's hard to see him fit in with the dive necessarily. Um, and he's not going to be part of like a Reinhardt Zarya thing because he can't really help Reinhardt get in and kind of the damage without the bubble. Well, yeah, who's his like, who's his go-to secondary flex tank? Like, you know, you've taught me all about you know pairing the, the tanks. Pairings, yeah, who's his pairing? Is it I think Hammond. So. I have yeah, I have two in mind. One is Hammond. The yeah. the sick bum balls meme is very alive and real. I think <laughs> I think Hammond has the mobility that can start a lot of these dives, right. and Sigma can kind of help get the team in and rolling with the, that moving shield. It could be pretty useful. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem like they could have a strong alt combo as well, so that could be a possibility. Yeah. But I actually think he'll pair better with two other heroes. One being Diva for withstanding Bastion comms. I think he can have a good niche in both of them having the ability to eat that slew of bullets raining in. Right. Um, I get you that space, which could be very useful in solo queue, especially when coordination is lackluster. Right. Um, and the other being Orisa, an actual double shield composition mm. where you have the one in front and the Sigma can actually project his shield at very odd angles. He can put it right above you horizontally and kind of stop you from getting shot from above. Right. It could be a neat scenario we haven't seen before in the league and I'm excited to experiment. Oh, I can't wait for those highlights of the wall going up right in front of an all-thing fair and just fair just facing your own oh, rockets head yes. on. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to watch. And it was so much fun chatting with you, Ron. Thank you for uh, joining us with your Overwatch-filled brain. You got any uh, time this week to carry my ass in some Apex Legends? Yeah, I think I think I definitely could do that. You know, I, I'm always better than you in any shooter, so I think it's only right for me to share my skill around the table at the office. Uh, I missed you busting my chops. <laughs>